Okay, here's the old battery. You see how swollen, how puffed out that is? And the same on this side. Okay, now let's look at the replacement. Okay, this side is flat. But let's look at the other side. And you see this is actually concave. All right, let's give it a try. Okay, this is what I've been working on. This is the backup system. Uh, that's an editing program there. But here's the big surprise. I saved for this for months. I have a teleprompter. And all the comments I got on part three of the housing were so positive. And it's because of this. And I'll give you an example. I did a walkthrough the way I would normally do a video without this. And it took me 23 minutes to do that video. And then with this, not counting the introduction and the ending, it was under 11 minutes. So it was less than half of the time because I was able to keep myself focused, organized, in sync. It comes with a little uh, remote so I can speed up the text or stop it, slow it down. Uh, the real expense of it is actually this glass that is like gold. The rest of it is not so much, it's no big deal. And the reason I have this is the cover for it is very difficult to snap on and off. I'm actually afraid I'm going to break the glass, but I'll also lose the adjustment I have for it every time. So I just took one of my old black t-shirts that uh, had holes in it, put two-sided tape here, and I can drape it over that, and that'll protect that glass, keep it clean. And um, so that's one of my big improvements been very useful. I've used it a number of times. It does take a little extra work because I have to take my notes and actually type them out so I can put them in my phone and then the phone sits on there and it just scrolls. But I think it's worth it in the long run. I think it's saving me time. So that's it. Oh, and this editing program is Cyberlink. Uh, it's PowerDirector, uh, what number? 18, I believe.
She could not imagine there was a heaven. There was nothing she could hold in her vision and climb to through dreams. She could not trust the untouchable, the reality she could never know. There were only loose threads of past and present, which she twisted on stretched out fingers. Days she could touch and feel, and voices in the torturous void that did not resemble speech, and faceless, nameless sounds she must resist like early death. They came too soon, so that she did not hear, only listened to the confusion she felt. In the room of invisible faces, she must walk alone. Feel their eyes upon her, knowing they could see her desire, like the full-blown rose dropping its garments. Knowing she would fall into the arms of a stranger, and wait to discover she had given too much of herself.